Hi, welcome to part two, or maybe part three, of the LFO Modulate Anything with Max for Live uh, demo tutorial conversation. Uh, what you're hearing right now, I've got a couple of different things going on. Mostly, um, I have an audio a drum loop. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of uh, redux and erosion on it, doing kind of like a you know 8-bit Nintendo kind of feel to it. I uh, see so I got two LFOs. This one's grayed out at the moment because I have open Max. Uh, you'll see that in a second. And another LFO here. So I'm, I'm using. Let's see what I'm going on here. I have. Oh, that's not quite up to date there. Um, that one is running the Redux uh, sample here, down sampling, to make kind of crunchy uh, sound. And I have another one running Erosion, kind of uh, bringing some white noise, you know, this wide noise in and out, so it gives it a real kind of, you know, like I said, you know, kind of a Nintendo Mirage, you know, kind of funky feel to it. And it's all being modulated, so it's not like, boring and stiff. Um, but that's not the main thing of the, uh, of the demo right now, so I'm going to turn that off, or maybe I'll just kind of turn that uh, down. Alright, now uh, I'm going to pull some windows over here, and uh, I'm going to step through some stuff that's going on inside Max for Live. And i got two windows this time, because i got uh, a couple of different topics I want to talk about. Now, first and foremost, this is my main Max for Live device over here now. Uh, it looks a little different than it did last time because I've, I've taken out some of the dials. I kind of did a bunch of stuff for efficiency so that uh, it's not using up as much CPU. Now on my system, you know, it uses like, you know, one or two percent uh, of a partial CPU thread. So it's not really much going on at all. Um, so that was pretty good. And I added some new modes, uh, which are which are kind of cool. If you see the drop down here, I've got ramp up, ramp down, triangle, sine, rect square, and I also have this new random one. Some uh, A few people asked me about adding a random uh, capability to it. So I, I went ahead and did that. All right, so um, let's let's start with the random part. So let's, let's grab rand here. Uh, and you'll see now my little uh, indicator dial is kind of just jumping around at random. Uh, it's a little bit weird uh, in that it doesn't quite follow the same signal path as the other one, but for efficiency's sake, uh, I went a little bit of a different route. What happens now is uh, normally we set the time in this drop down over here, and there's a little separate section for, for the random one. Uh, it has a little metronome of its own that it creates based on that number rather than using the phaser. And every time that metronome kicks off, it triggers, uh, it, it generates a random number from 0 to 100, random 101. Uh, yeah, it's 0 to 1 less than this number, that's why it's 101 there. And then it divides it by 100 and gives me just a random number between 0 and 1. Um, and then it pipes that into my sixth type of, uh, of LFO. So I've got uh, all the, the normal ones uh, and, and plus this new random one here. So that one kind of goes, goes through. And I use a switch to make sure to turn it off. So I have the switch down here, and I don't want this thing just kind of free running for no good reason. Now you notice also I have this gate kind of coming in here. Gate means it's going to choose one, uh, it's going to route the input to one of the six possibilities, so one of my LFO types, so that I'm not you know, running additional processing power on the other guys while it's doing nothing. Uh, and then I have this switch on the other side to make sure that uh, it's only sending uh, one of the six out the other side. And this might seem a little strange at first. It's like, well, if this is coming in on this side and it's it's only being triggered by this gate, why do you need a switch on the other side? And it, initially, I didn't think I needed to. And, and uh, I think in the earlier example, there's a bug in that the uh, this guy here, the, the sine wave uh, oscillator, um, this cycle, even when it's stopped, it's it's sending out a signal. So uh, you see right now, it's you know sending out 0.7758. So what I had to do is you know use this switch here to make sure that this you know DC value, this constant value that was kind of coming through, would get you know make sure it got out and it doesn't like conflict with things here. So you wind up like jamming you know two values into the same dial at once. So I, I, I added that to to make sure it doesn't. So you have a gate in and then a switch out on the other side. So gate means route an incoming signal to one of six, and then a switch means you know route one of six incoming signals to one out. So I have a one in, many out, and then many in, one out on the other side. 
Everything else is pretty much the same. I, I, I tweaked a couple of things around a little bit. Um, you might notice over here I have a, an additional uh, button or bang going on because it used to be when you change the upper value, uh, it didn't bang the uh, the scrub bar, uh, the, the range uh, selector, and so the the uh, upper value wasn't getting set until you also set the lower value or scrubbed it. So that that fixed that. Um, also added a new a couple of new parameters. I'm not sure if I had phase and quantize last time around. I don't think I did. Um, what phase does is it allows you to kind of shift the LFO um, up to a cycle forward. So this way, you know, if you have, you know, you want to you want to push uh, one of your ramps up or push them back so that you know kind of they're out of phase with one another, you can do that. And all it does to do that is it adds a number from zero to one. Uh, to the, the value coming out of the phaser. So that kind of shifts the whole thing up. Uh, and normally the phaser is going zero to one and I add up to one to it. You can imagine, well, okay, now it's becoming two. So isn't that weird, you know, what's gonna happen? And that's where this modulo one point comes in. Uh, and what that does is it basically takes the value, divides it by one, and then, uh, you know, spits out the remainder, which is, which is good. So now if it starts to say the value was 0.5, it becomes 1.5, the remainder is 0.5, so it gets, 0.5 comes back out again. So it has a way of, you know, everything that gets shifted above one wraps around uh, and then, you know, so my, my uh, phaser uh, is just being shifted in time and the value comes out to be 0 to 1 again because this this modulo operator, which is great. Uh, so that takes care of adding phase to it. I don't care about the phase of the, of the random one because it's random, so who cares? So I don't have to worry about that. So I don't have to worry about the, the, uh, the phaser or the, the phase of the phaser. Okay. Now I also added this kind of cool quantize value for the heck of it. So it lets you to like set up um, to quantize the steps of some of these LFOs, and, and that's that's kind of cool too. So what I do for that is I just have this uh, slider that can be, you know, uh, I think it goes down to what a sixteenth, basically. You know, quarter is here, uh, eighth, sixteenth or no quantization at all. So you can quantize by half, so your value will go from 0 to 0.5 to 1, you know, kind of thing. Um, and that's kind of cool. It gets, you can create kind of stepped values of your, your ramps and stuff. You can go, you know, up as, as opposed to, you know, nice smooth ramps. And that's kind of a cool feature, too. So you see uh, my snapshot of values here. Normally, if I bring it down, I get nice smooth values. If I bring it up, I'm getting quantized values. So I get these kind of steps. Uh, so I subdivide my cycle into some some number, you know, divide it into two steps or eight steps or sixteen steps or four steps. So that's a lot of fun too. Um, I also changed a bunch of stuff. Uh, let me uh, edit uh, enable editing here. I, I changed a bunch of stuff in how the parameters get chosen. Uh, the first thing I did is I made it so that it only chooses devices that are on this track. I mean, rather than show you like every device in the whole uh, live set, I mean that just seemed kind of crazy. So I said, okay, well, you know, if you drag one of these LFOs onto a track, it'll show you the devices on that track. So you can't like grab an LFO and drag it to one track and expect to control another track or device on another track. That seemed reasonable, and it also kept it sort of more manageable. So you know, you can see this track has these LFOs on it, this track has these LFOs on it. You know, great. Now, how I did that. Uh, if we look in here, and this is this is where all the the, the uh, live API the interface stuff is going on, and this is a little bit hairy. Um, I don't know if I'll go quite into all this. I'm going to assume uh, that you you can look at select device. Uh, this is some of the uh, uh, Max for Live abstractions that come with Max for Live, and it lets you set up things, and it has like this one that lets you select devices. And I changed it around a little bit. I added this uh, sub patch here, uh, and all this does. It uses the path and it looks at this, this whole notion of uh, live paths and the whole live object model and, and so on. Uh, that definitely could be a whole other topic of its own. So maybe if you're interested, let me know and I'll, I'll do yet another tutorial on, on that. But for this case, the important thing is to know that um, this device can say, okay, sh tell me, you know, ask me about myself. That's this device. So you say path, this device canonical parent, what that means is tell me about the parent of this device, right? So this whole object model, if you were a track, your your um, your parent might be the song or the view or something. So it's like the thing that owns you. As a, so 
This device is owned by the a track, so this way I am able to get out a track ID out of this based on the current device that I'm that I'm in. And that's kind of cool, rather than saying, oh, give me all tracks like this, this thing used to. So after it figures out what track it's on, then it trickles through like it normally did, gets all the devices on that track, boom, 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 populates everything, it's all good. Saves it. Uh, there's a little bit of weird stuff going on. The earlier version also didn't save uh, the parameters all right. And that, that was all great. Um, now, all the regular Max for Live stuff, uh, it had one also kind of shortcoming that I, that I didn't like. Uh, as you added and removed devices, it wouldn't automatically keep track. Um, you had to like click that button that said, you know, refresh the device, refresh, you know, the track, see what's going on. So I decided to add something, and this introduces this concept of these live.observer, this observer uh, object kind of thing. Um, and what that does is it lets you say, okay, there's something uh, that I want to keep track of, and I want to be informed when something changes. So that's what's going on up here. You'll see there's a load bang, which means as soon as this is loaded, this thing gets banged. I delay for a while. There's a little bit of weird stuff going on. You, you can see some stuff in the forums about this. You know, load bangs are, are kind of strange. There's a whole bunch of initialization steps that go on. So I find more than more often than not is I put a delay in there and, and then it more or less works correctly. If I don't put a delay in there, things might not be set up like I think they're going to be before. So I, I delay a little bit. I then say, OK, find out the track I'm on. Uh, so as I'm loading, I find out what track I'm on, and I say, OK, I want to monitor. I want to set up an observer for devices on this track. So every time the devices changes, this observer spits out the new value for devices. right? So this, this code in, in Max here is going to get automatically run whenever the devices change on this track, which is kind of cool. OK, so it bangs out. This bang bang occurs, and this is just a way of saying, okay, I've, uh, I split this one bang into three that occur in this order, right to left. So this one, then this one, then this one. And that's important because I have to do a little bit of weird stuff. Um, if I don't do this step and this little bit of, of gunk I'm get, about to explain, um, it'll load the new devices and list them all in my drop down, but it'll forget what one was already selected, which is also bad because I want it to, like, you know keep track of where it was, you know, because it, it, nothing's changed other than a new device was added. So you have to fix the menu, but not screw everything else up. So that's what's going on here. So it hits out a bang. This goes the bang, the, the, the first one bangs the actual menu itself. And then the menu spits out its value, what the current value is at. Okay. And so I set it like here, you'll see it, it, it winds up going, you know, through here, comes out, sets this little message box erosion that happens to be the, the current device I'm, I'm working on so that happens that gets set and then it just sits there because this path goes through here this just sets the box it doesn't do anything with it yet then this goes through populates everything with the second bang and then the last thing that happens it goes through this bang happens actually bangs the message and selects that value in there so it can kind of resets itself loads the new uh, all the new U menu stuff in and then bangs that so that it then sets it. And I'm doing it this way using the set and a real message rather than just the number that comes out because the numbers change. You know, it's, it's a, an ordered list inside here. So erosion might have been number two last time around and suddenly you added one and now it's number three or you subtract one and now it's number one. So you can't do that. So that's why I use the actual message here. So that gets banged, it comes around. It, uh, the final bang sets it back to where it should be, so everything works all nicely. So that's what's going on. Um, I'm going to try to post this. I've been posting some of the new versions of this up on www.maxforlive.com, which is a, a kind of a community site with all sorts of Max devices um, on it, and that's really awesome. And anyway, this is the latest version. Hopefully some of this made sense. Um, this live.path is where you get your IDs and your indexes. Live.observer lets you monitor them and automatically act on them. So it's a little bit of an introduction to that kind of stuff. And then hopefully um, some of this other stuff over here made sense about uh, how we added the random, how we added the uh, phaser and the quantize, uh, excuse me, phase and quantize and the random one. And uh, enjoy, have some fun, take care, let me know if this stuff is interesting, seems to be. Uh, anyway, that's the one for today. Take care, bye.